Right, week five, measures of central tendency and spread, which will encompass the mean, median, mode, which you guys will have learnt before, and possibly something new, the interquartile range, which will be made up of the five quartiles. Right, first up you've got the mean, which is just the average. So you sum up all of your scores and then divide by how many you have. If you look over here, this is the formula for mean in mathematical notation. So you've got x bar, which is your mean, equals this curvy looking letter, which is the Greek letter capital sigma, which means the sum of all of your x's, I'll get into what that means in a minute, divided by n, which is the number of numbers that you have. Next up, you've got the median. The middle value of numbers when they're arranged from smallest to largest. An easy way to find it is get the total number of numbers, add one, and then divide by two, and that will be the place that the median's in, taking into account that you've arranged them from smallest to largest. And last up, the easiest one, mode, is the most occurring number. And you've got three choices that can happen here. Either well, you've got no mode, that is each score occurs only once. Two, you've got one mode. Or three, you've got more than one mode. So you've got two numbers that are occurring exactly the same amount, like two fives or two sixes. All right, let's get into examples. So you've got this data here. We want to find the mean, median and mode. So first up, if we want to find the median, We'll add up all those numbers. That's your sum x. That gives us 33. And if we count those numbers there, we've got eight of them. So our n is eight. All you need to do then, put it into your formula. x bar equals the sum of x divided by n, which will give you 33 divided by eight, 4.125. Okay, next up we've got the median. So first thing you need to do, arrange your numbers from smallest to largest. Then remembering your rule for your median is it'll be in the n plus one on two spot. We have eight numbers, eight plus one is nine, divided by two, it'll be in the four and a half spot. We don't have a number in the four and a half spot. So we go to spot number four and spot number five and it will be halfway in between those two numbers. This one's quite an easy example. Halfway in between four and four is four. But just to show you the mass behind it, if the two numbers aren't the same, you add them both together and divide by two to get halfway in between those two. Okay, and lastly, the mode, the easiest one. If you've got them all arranged in order from smallest to largest, this makes it really easy because all the numbers are next to each other. We've got three fours and we have two fives. So the mode here will be four because that's the most number of numbers of that one that we have. We've got three fours. We don't have three of anything else. The okay, next thing we're going to look at is frequency distribution tables. And the main thing to note here is that the formula for your mean is a tiny bit different. Don't want to get into it too much in this page. I'll go into the example on the next page and you'll see how that comes into play. One other thing to note though, the mode is the score of the highest frequency. And we'll get into the median over the page as well. Right, so we've got this example here. This is our frequency distribution table. So each one of these, so if we look to say example, a score of four, only one person got that. Where a score of seven, four people got that. That's how you read that table there and we've got the total down below. We wanna find the mean, median and mode for these ones. First thing that you'll do whenever you see a frequency distribution table, 
always add the F times X column and your cumulative frequency column. F times X, quite straightforward. Just get your F times it by your X. So 4 times 1 is 4, 5 times 2 is 10, etc, etc, all the way down. Cumulative frequency is also quite easy, but not quite as apparent. So frequency first, we've got 1. Then if we add the next number down, 1 plus 2 is 3. Then add on the 5, get 8, etc. Until we get to the very last number. And the last one should be the same as your n. So they're both 15 there, so it checks out. One other thing to add is the sum of your f times x column, which in this case is 96. We need that for when we calculate our mean because the top of that equation is our sum of f times x. Then all we need to do is divide that by our n, which we have up here. So 96 divided by 15, 6.4. So that's our mean. Going on to the next one, our median. Same formula as before when it wasn't grouped. We have 15 numbers in total. We get that from our frequency here. So 15 plus 1 divided by 2 is going to be in the 8th spot. If we look at our cumulative frequency down here, our 8th spot occurs at score number 6. So that's our median. And last up, the mode, which is also the easiest when it's grouped data. All we have to do is go down our frequency column, look for the largest number. In this case, it's 5. So our most occurring number is score 6. Okay, going on to range. Range is another one of those really easy statistics. Get your largest number minus your smallest number of the set. And that's all it is. That's how you get your range. So we look at this set of data up here. Our highest score is 5.2. Smallest one is 2.1. So we'll put it into our formula. Largest number takes smallest, 3.1. Okay, interquartile range. For the interquartile range, you'll need your lower quartile and your upper quartile. Before we get to that, let's just talk about the median for a second. So your median is known as quartile number two, right in the middle. So if you've got all your data and split it on either side of the median, the median of your lower half of data is your lower quartile, and the median of your upper half of your data is your upper quartile. You'll see that in the example coming up. But your interquartile range, all you do is get your Q3, your upper quartile, minus off your lower quartile. Right, so let's have a look at this example here. Calculate the interquartile range of the following set of data. So first thing you'll want to do is put it from smallest to largest. Working nice and neatly there. And then once you've got it from smallest to largest, you want to find your median. With a smaller set of data, it's not always necessary to use the n plus 1. You can if you want, it will still work. But with this one, I can see my middle number is 5. So if my middle number is 5, that's my Q2. No need for this one, I'm going to write it in here anyway. And then I've divided my data into everything below the median and everything above the median. So I want to find my first quartile, which is the median of my lower half. So the middle number in here. Halfway in between 2 and 3. So 2 plus 3 divided by 2 is 2 and a half, which will be my Q1. And same thing with the upper halfway in between 6 and 7, which will be 
which will be my Q3. Then lastly, to find your interquartile range, take your largest quartile, which is Q3, minus off your smallest quartile, which is Q1, and then just plug in the numbers, 6.5 minus 2.5 equals 4.